All right. So this is a real letter that I read to my second and third grade students on May 7, 2017. I'll be honest with you, as your teacher and as a grown-up, there have been times in my life I felt invisible or like shouting into the noise of all the problems in the world wouldn't do anything. There have been times in my life when I remained silent about things I cared about because I felt too busy or because I was afraid to pick up a phone or because I really thought it just wouldn't change things. Rewind to last September. It was the start of a new school year at the School for Community Learning, a small private school on 42nd Street south of Butler campus. I was the second and third grade teacher. Okay, the second and third grade teacher, as in the second and third grade teacher for the whole school. Um, and I had 15 students in my class, and the year was off to a great start. I was working hard learning how to do inquiry projects with my students for grad school. When Jim Poyser of Earth Charter Indiana said, did you know that some of the trees at Crown Hill Cemetery are up to 500 years old? And they're supposedly some of the last old growth trees in the state of Indiana. Oh, and by the way, they might get cut down. Well, that got my attention. The Veterans Administration, the VA, was planning to build a national cemetery on the site. The trees could come down as early as November. So Jim took us on a field trip to the Crown Hill Woods. We would just walk there. It was two blocks from the school. And I thought I was taking my class for a living history lesson, to see them before they were cut down. And you did what kids do. We tromped around in the mud, and you noticed just about everything, from, look, raccoon prints, to, I think I see a deer. Uh, there was no deer, because second graders are incredibly loud, even when they try to be quiet. <laughs> and we paused in the middle of that forest, and we were silent. We thought about how many things we saw, and how many things we heard, and about what would happen to all those things if the ecosystem just vanished. And then everyone shouted at once, Miss Elena, we have to do something. Did I want to try to save them? Absolutely. I was just as outraged as you that someone even would even think to cut them down. Did I think we would succeed? Honestly, I didn't know. When we wrote letters to the VA that very same day, I had no idea where it would go. It felt like the typical third grade lesson. Let's write a letter to the president or to your senator. Hip hip hooray for civics. But I wasn't sure it would make a real difference. Maybe, I thought, maybe these letters will end up in another stack of mail in another office. Or maybe someone will look at the letters and go, well, that's cute. Even though I hoped that wasn't true. Even though I saw the power in your words, I could only hope that someone else would too. You and I know that your words are more than cute. Your words were and are powerful. You wrote, if you cut them down, you destroy history. The animals need the forest. The cemetery is a great idea, but not a great idea on top of a forest. I don't understand why you'd want to put it there. Please, oh please, move to your crypt. Okay, bonus points, this was a second grader. He's in the word crypt. I just want to give him a little props right there. To a field of some sort, please. Trees make air and we need air, so please don't cut down the trees. I thought we might write the letters and that would be it. We would never know if they would truly make a difference. Still, I sent them off hoping that we might get lucky. But it turned out that that was just the beginning. I don't remember exactly how the Indiana Forest Alliance contacted us, but it was they who started the wheels spinning. I do remember that we were invited to speak on behalf of the neighborhood at a community meeting, and that three of you showed the most confidence and poise I have ever seen in children so young as you took the mic. I remember how we called Senator Donnelly on the phone, all sitting on the floor in the middle of the classroom, and talked to a very surprised aide as we all chanted, please save the trees and move the cemetery. We had to practice that a few times first. I remember walking side by side a few of you as we attended a small march on behalf of the woods and about how you just about chatted my ear off nonstop. And when we got a call the next week from the Forest Alliance about would we be able to come to a press conference, I said, yes. So in college, there's no course on press conference for students 101. <laughs> there are no standards or curriculum about how to scaffold that particular skill. I wasn't even sure I really knew fully myself what we were being asked to do, but we co-authored a statement together. I was amazed at how you worked to write our press conference statement, how you brainstormed about how the trees had watched our neighborhood be built, about how generations of deer had lived in those woods, how we wanted to honor the veterans, but this wasn't the right spot. Our class representative, a girl with poise and a strong, clear voice, read it for the cameras and microphones. And we watched together that afternoon as we were featured on WTHR on the evening news. I saw your hopeful faces with your posters about the forest should be saved because reflected on the screen. 
We talked about how this chance to speak out for something, to reach millions of people, is something so rare. And I was so proud. And it wasn't just us. We met hundreds of people from our neighborhood and across the city who listened, and we listened too. We met veterans who didn't want to be buried in the cemetery if the trees came down, forest advocates and other children who cared really deeply about the issue. One school mom, a veteran herself, moved us to tears. And then we waited. And the trees, or sorry, and the leaves dropped off the trees one by one. And we didn't know if they would get a chance to grow back. In February, the construction fence was put up and the site was prepped for demolition. I was terrified every day driving to school that I would have to look at your faces, the inevitable tears if the trees came down. There was a vigil. I remember placing my candle in a patch of snow at the root of a 300-year-old bur oak and thinking, this is over. This is done. We, we failed. We had reached out. We had made the phone calls, done the marches, and we became involved. And, and what now? What if we couldn't do this one small thing for a tiny part of our city? What would, could we do about anything bigger? What lesson would that possibly teach in a time when our involvement and our voices, our caring, compassionate voices, needed to be heard more than ever. But that wasn't what happened. The Crown Hill Northwoods are no longer slated for bulldozers. While we are waiting and working to permanently preserve them, a 500-year-old piece, uh, sorry, a 500-year-old piece of our neighborhood still stands. You did this. You did something that matters, not only to you, not only to our class or to our school or to our city, but our state. You saved the lives of thousands of creatures. That doesn't happen every day. I certainly don't remember literally saving lives in my second and third grade years. I hope you remember this day for a long time to come, and I hope you remember a few things about this experience. I hope you remember this as more than that time we were on the news. And I hope that one day, some of us can get over the fact that not all of us were featured in the clip. I'm looking at you, Kevin. <laughs> I hope you remember that this is not something we accomplished on our own. I hope you remember that we were joined by hundreds of people across Indianapolis, incredibly wonderful, passionate people who love this forest as much as you do. Many of those people were veterans. Some stood nearly in the direct path of the bulldozers, which may have been the ultimate saving grace. This was not something we did alone. We were incredibly fortunate to find a group of people who were willing to speak out together and never gave up. One last lesson I hope you learned, because it's the biggest one. It's the one that you taught me. You matter. Your voice matters. What you do, what you say, even what you think matters. Whatever you believe in, whether it's next year, the year after, or many years in the future, if you think it's worth speaking out for, don't hesitate. Use your powerful words carefully. Find the others who care just as much as you do. Never, never, never stop. And you will make a difference. As for me, you taught me so many things this year, but you reminded me that there's no such thing as being invisible or just shouting into the noise. There is more than just the hope that things can change. There is more than sending the letter off and just hoping that someone sees it. It takes action, but you don't have to be big or loud or old enough or have a fancy job or type in all capital letters on social media. It just takes a few small steps, some really well-chosen words, some great friends to go along with you, and the spark of not giving up. Of course, I have to leave you with this since we started with it. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And of course, Dr. Seuss. Well, good thing you care a whole awful lot. Get ready, world. We're going to be blown away by all the amazing things you will accomplish. I just know it. Love, Miss Elena. <laughs>